Agile for Humans is brought to you by Audible.com. Get one free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash agile. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, including Scrum, The Art of Doing Twice the Work in Half the Time by Jeff Sutherland, and Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. Visit www.audibletrial.com forward slash agile to enjoy your free audiobook today. Processes and tools dominate today's agile discussions. But we are devoted to the individuals and interactions that make it work. From the beginner to the veteran practitioner, we have something for you. Welcome to Agile for Humans. All right, we are back with another episode of Agile for Humans. We are still in Indianapolis at the Agile Indie Conference. I'm with Kalpesh Shaw. A very vibrant and interesting speaker. So I got to meet Kalpesh in New York and really loved. He does this talk called uh, "Don't Be a Backlog Lumberjack." Uh, it was probably one of the, uh, appeared to be probably the highest rated uh, talk at the event, right? Oh, I guess so. Yeah. Well, first of all, welcome. I kind of jumped in. I <laughs> Thank didn't even you. say hi. Right? <laughs> so Kalpesh, good to see you in Indianapolis. Uh, thanks for doing the show. Thanks, Ryan. But yeah, we we met in New York at Big Apple Scrum Day. Yeah. Had a great time out there. Really neat event. Oh, yeah. Had a uh, blast. And I I walked in. So as a speaker, you know how this goes. You get you do your talk. People want to talk. You get yeah. caught in the hall. Well, I came into Kyle Pitch's talk in the kind of mid. Oh, okay. And he is just he's animated. He's very passionate, <laughs> and the crowd is just like on the edge of their seat. And so, how do you do this? Because I, I think it's an interesting skill. Because when yeah. I, I watch you speak, I think. This guy has every single person hanging on his word. Where does that come from? <laughs> I think it's uh, it's pure passion, right? And I think uh, well, I think it's two things. One is uh, passion for for what you do uh, and for for the message. But at the same time, the I really care for that message, right? Uh, it, it isn't about just another topic. I I really want to see that change happen, uh, and it's. Uh, so it's you know I'm very passionate about that particular topic or um, just to bring that change about um, and at the same time I, I really really care deeply and I think it just becomes second nature. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's very it's fun to watch and so I think everyone like I said very highly rated talk I think people enjoyed it. That talk was backlog lumberjacks. Can right. you so at first sound it's like well wait a minute I was thought I was supposed to cut down my backlogs and make them as small as possible. You know, where are you going with, with the lumberjack kind of theme and what problem did you see in the world that, that you wanted to address? All right, I think, uh, so that's, that's a very good question. I think um, you're right. I initially, when, you know, I've, I've even seen buttons being given out where like, you know, be a backlog lumberjack. And it was like, you know, I'm, just, I'm like a, a machine that's chopping through my backlog. And, and I was seeing that, like, you know, teams doing that, like teams after teams doing like, you know, just kind of chopping the backlog and just kind of chopping it away. But then I kind of saw that they were just basically going from user story to user story and without realizing like, what is this really doing? Like, it's just basically, I, I call it like if I was visualizing a lumberjack, right? It's just saying, put wood here, chop, next. Put wood here, chop, next, right? Um, and I was seeing that with the teams as well where there was like this backlog where this place for them were like, you know, put story here, chop, next. Put story here, chop, next. But without having much, uh, understanding or saying like where did this really come from what problem is it really solving and and once it's out uh what did it did it really do it did it really <laughs> solve the problem or not so we were in this this loop or this i, I kind of call it infinite loop right if you're an engineer um so that's what i, I kind of like you know, i think we need to solve this problem uh, either we're just basically creating like a story factory over here yeah, it's the the conundrum of the feature factory. Absolutely. Well, we ship that. We check the box. What's yeah. the problem? What's the problem? But it's done, done. It's yeah, it's done, done. <laughs> it's the done, double done. done, right? <laughs> yeah. But did we did we get value? Absolutely. Was it did the cus did it delight the customer? Absolutely. Or do we have defects? All these different things that are outside of the right. the pure act of shipping. That absolutely. It, it, it's a great topic in that it it's asking the team to actually have an awareness outside of itself. Yes. So there are there are business people yes. in our organizations that care about yeah. ROI, roadmap, you know, different 
you know, up sales and all those things. And I think it's great that you're actually bringing those back to the team and saying this is a real thing too. Yeah, and, and you know, it's it, it was actually an experiment, to be very honest with you, where, where we kind of looked at it and said, well, what will happen if we opened up the boundaries of the Scrum framework, right? And we exposed the team to the befores and the afters. Uh, and first it was just basically, let's give them a sneak peek. Uh, and then let's see how they interact with this thing. And, and you know what, Ryan, we kind of saw that uh, yes, given the opportunity, they wanted to participate. Uh, they wanted to see how the users were using their product. They wanted to see where it was coming from. And and yes, they did care about whether it did it or not for them, right? Um, so, yeah. I, it, it's When I see a team whose morale is low, and I think right. we've all coached teams where Absolutely. you see that the, the body posture is kind of yeah. slumping and people aren't excited about the work, yeah. you know, one of the first questions that I tend to ask is, well, have you seen the customer use product? And then what's amazing is the majority of the time, the answer is no. No, yeah. And so what we actually will do is exactly what you said. Take that end cap off of Scrum. Right. Have the team actually go and see a customer either get delighted, which yeah. you hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or not be happy, but right. give very good feedback. And suddenly Absolutely. the energy of that team just yeah. raises up. It's Absolutely. Like, we have an outcome. We're yeah. doing something cool. The customer's yeah. happy. Or we have an outcome. The customer's kind of happy. They'd like these three things that we didn't think of, yeah. had no clue about. Yeah, yeah. Let's go make them happy. Absolutely. And it's, it, it seems to me, at least in my experience, to be a very easy way to get that morale yeah. and some of that camaraderie and that excitement about the work back. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and you what they are then able to contribute uh, in a very educated manner in the whole prioritization exercise. So if the product owner brought something to the table, um, they are, are, are coming to the table with an intellectual debate on why is it that important? What problem have you seen? Because when I was there, I saw this and you need to solve this problem. So it really becomes, I mean, they're, they're now participating in the, the value conversation, prioritization by value, right? Sure. Um, but you kind of mentioned like, you know, where we take the teams and show them what's really happening. I know some of the organizations which have intentionally built time for engineers or team members to see the way the users are using their product. Uh, I'll give you an example, uh, or what I, the concept I call this is uh, user exposure hours. So I basically always say is that like, you know, every like four hours every four weeks, you should spend time observing the users, right? Uh, I know, uh, I, I believe Zappos has this concept where once a month um, their engineers uh, listen to uh, a customer, or actually answer customer service calls, uh, or respond to customer service uh, emails, because that's where they really get the feeling of the connection with, with the users. And I know uh, Intuit uh, has this program called Follow Me Home, uh, and where they actually take the engineers to the home of uh, some of the, the actual users they have solicited to kind of just sit there and watch, watch the user actually using their product in their environment. And let me tell you, that's very, um, enlightening for them yeah I mean it's it's what we're all about too yeah. right it's these short feedback loops getting yeah. the information about your product yeah. but it, it's amazing that that we're and I've, I've seen this too so it's not a knock on any any one thing or, or it's just a general observation that this is still not happening it is yeah, even true. though we're agile right right or we're following a process or we're right. trying to be agile we're doing right. how doing being thinking whatever you want to call it but we're not getting rapid feedback from a customer. Right, and well, because you know what, it's gonna affect our velocity. Yeah. That's the question oh. that I hear. <laughs> we can't, right? we don't have time to talk we to the customer. Exactly, we don't have like, I need to ship all this stuff. I don't have, you don't have the time to do that. And, oh, man. and, and my answer to that is like, you know, just for spending that four hours, you're gonna get 40 hours worth of saving. Sure. Because then they will really know what problem to solve for. You know, once an engineer has actually seen the problem the customer is facing, that team member is not gonna ask for acceptance criteria because that person has actually experienced the problem that the customer was having, right? And they know how to basically go about it, right? The, the conversation wouldn't be about acceptance criteria, the conversation would be about, this is how we should solve this problem. Well, it's interesting, I was, right. I was able to talk to uh, Josh Karajewski before he, he took off from Agile Indy, right. and he actually, the, the nomenclature around his story, he's shifted it a little bit. So he actually calls a story, it's now a problem to be solved. Problem to be solved, and that's I fantastic. Think, and I think that kind of language feeds directly into your point that yeah. 
it's no longer some, some talk about a mythical thing. Right. This is a real problem that we have validated. Yes. Like we can call it a problem because we know the customer has either shown us that it's a problem or we observed them having trouble. Absolutely. And I think that just shifting that mindset a little bit or that nomenclature around it, now all of a sudden it's inherent. Oh, to, to actually yes. go see the customer. Go see, the, and, and I'll tell you, and I, I always say this, that do you know what's the best form of communication? Uh, it's not written, it's not verbal. Experience is the best form of communication. Sure. If they experience that problem, if you walk a mile in their shoes, trust me, you will not be asking for user story or acceptance criteria. You're going to go back to your desk and actually try to solve that problem. Right. Yeah. Well, how often, I mean, do we find that even as coaches, Right. Uh, we're reluctant to eat our own dog food. Yeah. Right. And so, why should it be any different for teams where yeah. they they know the the practice, they know um, what could be done right. to help identify the problem, but they don't. But then you put them in another another person's shoes, you give them that that empathy yeah. for the person that they're trying to solve that problem for, and suddenly uh, creativity and innovation flows. So Absolutely. It's very powerful talk. If you have a chance to. Uh, to see Kyle Pesh give his Lumberjack talk. I highly recommend it. I think you're going to be in Columbus. Yes, for Path to Agility, yes. Yep. I, are you giving the, the Lumberjack talk? Well, it's actually uh, it's, it's on a similar line. It's a, uh, um, it's a, uh, outcome or output, how to take your team to the next level of awesome. Perfect. And I'm actually sharing a case study over there where uh, we experimented, where we opened up the boundaries of Scrum Framework and we exposed them to before and after uh, and how the team... Uh, dynamics completely changed, right? How the motivation completely changed, and and if these were like twelve scrum teams. They were scrumming, and it was said, "Let's let's open up the boundaries and see what happens." And so I'm sharing the findings in that talk. Very cool. So it sounds like it's right along the same lines with some real world case yeah. study information. So I think that's going to be fascinating. I know a lot of Agile for Humans listeners will be at Path to Agility. Well, I'm looking forward to so so seeing them over there. I, I hope that all of you will check out Kyle Pesha's talk. I will be in the room as long as we're not scheduled at the same time. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so I hope, I hope one of these times we're actually not like counter-scheduled. But right. um, yeah, the Lumberjack talk or the output over outcome, that, so that whole discussion is fascinating. And I think you do it very well. Thank you. Here at Agile Indy, you brought forward another idea. Can yes. you go into that just a little bit? Absolutely. I brought a, a cool new technique called stand-up poker. Stand-up um, poker. Yes. Okay. Um, and so that was basically where um, the challenge was. Like, you know, I was, a, I was going to stand-ups after stand-ups, and the teams were kind of going around, right? Just basically just giving their, blurting their updates, no impediments, just kind of like, you know, next, 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 next. It's just another thing that we do, right? And um, so the whole goal was like, I just want to quickly blurt my updates and go back to my desk. <laughs> Can I please do that, right? So you're you're off my back. Um, and it was just another checkbox. I mean, yeah, we did it. And we were losing an opportunity of such a fantastic um, gathering in the morning to kind of plan our day. So it was basically just sending into a status update and not like planning for the day, right? So I was in one of the standups, and uh, I, you know, they just kind of went through their updates, and I, and they were about to leave, saying that we are done. We're done in seven minutes. We are so agile that, like, you know, <laughs> we're done in seven minutes. We don't even need fifteen minutes, right? Somehow that speed was a, a gauge of their agility. Uh, so I said, can we pause for a minute and and ask, uh, well, how confident are you guys that you guys will meet your sprint goal by the end of the sprint? Um, and can you can you give me like a fist of five or, or a zero to five, right? Sure. Uh, and then it became really awkward in the room uh, and everybody started looking at each other uh, and do you know what the question would be on their mind what's our sprint goal oh no, <laughs> oh, no. I know it took a bunch of stories but what is our sprint goal what so my question was what are you guys sprinting towards oh, right no. um, and and somehow this the scrum master right he got freaked out a little bit and he said like stop um, and uh, yesterday I was sharing a cartoon it's like you know I summoned the power of my certification uh, <laughs> I am a CSM and this is not one of the three questions you ask in a stand up and I said like calm down buddy you know it's it's uh, I, I'm friends summon, with agile police <laughs> summon the power of my CSM <laughs> CSM this was not in, in our like, this is not one of the three questions you ask in a stand up I said yeah let's that's fine let's just so what, what do you guys think? I was like, well, what's our sprint goal? Well, I said, for right now, let's just say that you have to finish all the stories you signed up for, right? Sure. Because they're just so disconnected. And that was another thing. Like, it's so disconnected, right? The story right. that we picked up. Um, so they gave their, uh, they gave their, like, okay, well, I said, well, okay, so, so they're like, well, what's a five? Well, I said, five is basically you'll be done in time for happy hour, 
right? A four would be like, I'm kind of liking where it's going, but we need to pick up a pace. Three is like, we need to like do seriously something about this thing, right? We gotta drop a story or two or something, right? A two would be like, now we are in really trouble. We need to like to really cut our stories down. Um, one was like, we have no clue what we are doing, and I'll be we'll be lucky if anything gets done. <laughs> And zero would be like, just cancel the sprint and call the Agile Shamans because our sprint commitment goals need to be exercised. So let me see if I can guess. You did not get higher than a two. So very. So you come, You bring a very interesting point. Uh, so there was a, a category of team members who were high, sure. and then there was a category of team members who were low. Uh, you want to guess which would be high and which would be low? Devs were high, testers were low. Right on the money, absolutely, right. right? Because, and when you kind of went around and said, like, okay, you guys are showing like a four or five, right? Uh, uh, why? It's like, well, I'll, I'll be done with my task by the end of the sprint. Yeah. I'll be done with my story. I'll be done with my tasks. And so I'm like, yeah, we will be. And then the QA guy is looking at them, it's like, well, you are, but have you thought of me? Uh-oh. I will get everything at the tail end. You give me a second last day of the sprint. And then I'm basically rushing through this thing and this thing never gets done. Either I'm rushed or things get carried over. Right, and it's, we never get stuff done that way, right? And so it was like, you know, so it completely shifts their mentality from from I will get my task done to we will get or to this finish line, right? So sure. So once the confidence were given out, we said, well, why do you feel a three? Why do you feel a four? Why do you feel a two? Uh, then I said, well, let's facilitate a conversation of what does it take? We are at aggregate three right now. How can we get to a five by tomorrow? What should we do today? to go from a three to a five. And then the team automatically started like planning it out. Okay, you know what, I'm, I'm working on three stories right now, but this one is really close. I'll give this to you for testing by noon. How is that, right? Nice. So at least can we kind of get the ball rolling? And so it kind of started that conversation. So from update, it went to like planning for their day. But planning, just not just for the day, planning to win. Plan to finish that sprint goal, right? Nice. Um, and that was very like, wow, I think something really magical just happened. Right, uh, and it was very easy. I mean, it wasn't about like you know looking at a burn down chart or updating our tasks to know where we are at. It was just simple gut feel, because that's all you can get. You could be updating your tasks every single day and accurately, and it still wouldn't be a right gauge of like will we make it? Well, I'm not sure. Things could blow up. Yeah, there's always the right. uh, the unknown out there. Exactly. Right. Uh, so this was, and that's how stand up poker came about, right? So there's like, oh, this is actually a really cool way of doing it, uh, and you know, I, everybody gets to talk. And I always ask this, like, you know. Uh, in the audience, I asked, like, because I actually make them do stand-up poker, uh, and I asked them, like, you know, what's your aha moment? And one of the things that really consistently has been called out is, like, you know what, this is an excellent way for even introverts to kind of call their voice out. Sure. Right? And, and, and it's kind of a level playing field. Like, the, the card gives a voice to everybody, right? So that the, the rock stars of the team or the alphas of the team can't, like, overpower. Like, no, I, I have a voice, and I, I feel it, too. Right, and, and this is the reason why, right? And it can really ground the team. So, uh, so it's, it's a fantastic technique to kind of make your um, stand up more engaging but more valuable. And one of the things also, it's also like an impromptu retrospective if you look at it, right? Where the team is like rather than waiting for retrospective, saying, okay, yeah, you know what? I got stories really late in this sprint and I couldn't really test it. We should do it better next time. Rather than that, we're like, well, let's just do it today. How are we going to get better today rather than waiting for that retrospective? Yeah, it, it's a very powerful practice. I know that even um, in the retrospective world, people are, are they're playing around with the idea of continual retros, yeah, where every yeah, day yeah. you put a post yes. above or below the line. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's actually where things will shift. It's great that you're bringing that to the stand up, yeah. uh, and actually incorporating the the sprinkle, which I think they did add the fourth question in the 2016 update. Oh, they did, huh? Day. So I think they actually do ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, some question around is the sprint goal in jeopardy or are we going to okay. get it? I, I think it's a good addition, but I think the idea that the introvert has the card. Yeah. So perhaps you have the the ten x developer, right? Who is always everything's a five because I will save the day and you know whatever that mentality is. We well, have that tester that can throw the one and say no, your stuff's buggy as all get out, and I fix it all in the last <laughs> yes. two days, and that's why we ship. That's a rich. I mean that that conversation is probably not a good one, but the fact that you can actually bring. Everyone to the table, everyone gets a card, everyone gets a vote, no card goes over another. And it's a very democratic way to manage. Absolutely, I like that. That's a very good way of saying, yeah, absolutely, it is, right? And it makes it very engaging, too. It's not like, well, did you update your task yesterday? Oh, oh, yeah, you know what? But what do we really feel today? But it's also like a good feeling of, like, you know, like really, where does everybody feel else feel where they right. are, right? They're working on the same thing. 
But even like, you know, what, and we kind of started seeing some behavior changes after that. Uh, so whenever the teams were like then going into sprint planning, the conversation wasn't starting with, well, what stories are we bringing in? It started with sprint goal. Yep. Well, what are we really trying to accomplish this sprint? Rather than asking that question to product owners saying that, well, these are like seven disconnected stories. Right? How, how, is, how, how is it really going towards a particular value, right? Uh, so the conversation really shifted. And then they were like, you know, how do we, we commit to win? Right? It's not, we don't commit individually saying like, well, I'll be done with my stuff, I think I'll be good. No, now I really have to think that we, have, we all will be reaching that finish line together. Yeah, it's really hard to be collaborative when every person takes their one task back to their cubicle and just work on it for two weeks and then try to ship it at the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I mean, basically what we've done is, it's like the, the morning keynote where we're, we're continuing to do the same old things just with a new set of practices and words. Exactly. I, I, I think that's just such a, a great point to make. And it's too common. It is. I mean, it really is. It it's, is. We've talked on, on past podcast episodes where it's the difference between a golf team and a basketball team. Right. Right. A golf team, you play your own ball right. and you're, you're really just trying to get a low score and then yeah. they, they add it up and your team, you know, win, lose or draw, it was an individual effort each way. Right. Basketball team, it's five people of varying skills, abilities, heights, all of those things. And if they don't play well together, it's going to be a losing team. <laughs> That's a fantastic analogy. So, yeah. Yeah. That's actually really good. Well, I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> it, it's, you can have it. I'm sure I stole it from someone else. But, uh, what I like about these practices, whether it's the the backlog lumberjack, uh, the outcomes over um, out, yeah, uh, over, output. Out, over out over the output, um, or even the stand up poker, is that I, I feel like whenever you're talking about these practices, it's really trying to get that collaboration back. Yeah, and so I think that's a, a great part of your practice, and I really appreciate you sharing that with yeah. uh, with the Agile for Humans audience. So. Yeah. We Thank are coming you. up to that, that 20 minute time box. Um, they can learn more at standuppoker.com. Well, that's where we're going right now. Yeah. So the, the last part of every show is an opportunity for you to get anything you want in front of the listener. Right, right. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure you want to continue the conversation with them. So if, how they can reach you on Twitter, yeah. LinkedIn, any websites, anything yeah. you'd like to share, we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. So for Stand Up Poker, uh, I, I made it very easy. Uh, it's standuppoker.com. Um, right, uh, you guys can go there to download the poker cards, um, the presentation that I give. Um, you can feel free to um, do that at your own user groups or your own meetups or your community of practice. I do that. I, I will make it very. I make it very freely available. It's free for everybody. Um, from a, uh, I, t I tweet pretty regularly uh, at Agile Bright Spot. So that's my handle, uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, so there are all different ways to to reach out to me. So I'll get links to all of those resources in the show notes. Absolutely. We'll make sure the listeners have every opportunity to check it out. I highly recommend it. And if you are at PATH, uh, I would go see Kalpesh. As long as he's not conflicting with my, my talk. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, go see him anyways. I'm all over the country this year. You can catch me at another one. I'm sure you are too, though. Yeah, we keep bumping into each other, but it's great to see you again. Yeah. I really appreciate you doing yeah. the show. Thank you so much, uh, Ryan. I really appreciate the opportunity, and, and good luck to your audience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Agile for Humans. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop us a question on Twitter at Agile for Humans or visit agileforhumans.com.